is November 27th. So Advent is coming. Um, the past couple of days here has been really great with uh, garage sale, drunk or treat. Um, and so there's been a lot of good community stuff. One of my neighbors even said we went over to your church um, and, and all that. And um, he actually was the one that piqued my brain. Um, he said, how long have you been over there? And I said, well, um, and I was thinking about this and next uh, August is going to be 20 years that I've been here. So um, hopefully that will continue. If it's not in the budget, just give me, just give me some heads up because there's a lot of music left. Um, take, take, please take moms and give them to people. Don't worry about paying for them. The whole idea is that it raised some money for the flower fund. We're going to pre-order the poinsettias this year. Um, so the poinsettia fundraiser or, well, flowers will come out in November, but we're going to pre-order to get really high quality plants. I've got the name of two wholesale growers. One provides to my school. So we'll have definitely red and white and maybe another color or two. So um, that'll happen and we're covered. Uh, I think that's it. It's, I'm not playing Scottish Fugue in D minor at the end because it's Reformation Sunday, So, but I am playing um, to a uh, Pachelbel and a Bach version of Ein Festabor, which is a mighty fortress, which is our dad and him. So sing like Lutherans. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. I'm going to go ahead and start the start the, uh, the the volunteer book around. So I'm just going to bring it over to this to this side. And um, just wanted to uh, say thank you to uh, everyone who. Uh, participated and helped out with the with the pricing for all the items for the garage sale and all the hard work that went into that and also all, all the preparation and hard work that went into uh, the trunk and treat. And I think uh, Naomi has something that she would like to share with us uh, for, for a few moments. Uh, my neighbor complimented trunk or treat and also the garage sale and said, very well organized. <laughs> <laughs> it was very well. <laughs> Our second annual trunk or treat was amazing. And I can't, I have so many people that I need to recognize, but we had 18 trunks. <laughs> Over 250 people were at our trunk or treat and a flying truck. <laughs> who, by the way, the firemen bought something from the garage sale. Okay. <laughs> um, there are so many people that I have to thank. First of all, Dina and Corinne. I blew up balloons for two cars yet um, on Friday night. Tying balloons is so hard on your hands. I can't <laughs> even imagine how she made this arch. So many balloons. And, you know, the shopping and the prepping and the planning. And Corinne helping her. So thank you, Dina and Corinne. Dan and Tammy. Tammy and Dan are just amazing. Tammy, the shopping, the planning, the back behind the scenes, and um, we need popcorn for the popcorn maker. I'll get the popcorn. That is Tammy. Dan. Dan had no idea he was making popcorn until that morning. <laughs> then he put on his clown, clown head um, hair on and he made the popcorn. Um, and the popcorn maker was donated by the Bonner family. Thank you to the Bonner family. That's going to come in handy for our next event and, and many more events. The Mac family, Cassandra was our reader out there, and she told everybody about the scat. She planned the scavenger hunt, and she gave them information about future events. And um, Alex, if it wasn't for Alex with her social media, I tell you, I asked everybody at my car, "How did you hear about this event?" Facebook, Facebook. Mom and daycare center family were there. <laughs> we have representation from them. And day camp kid, okay. How exciting is that? That's like so great. Um, Josie and Alex helping with you know setting up and Pastor for being the basketball guru. <laughs> he for two hours the man stood at the basketball net and the kids had so much fun with the games. Uh, you know, the Mac family purchased that basketball game and that is just priceless. So Justin Grip is a relatively new member. He had his baby baptized here a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't here for that. But I met this family, Justin and Lauren, and they were part of the trunks. They embraced it so beautifully. 
And Justin really helped me decorate three cars. I mean, I had to decorate four cars. It was my doing, but he decorated three cars. And if it wasn't for Dawn Chief, my car would have never been decorated. <laughs> Dawn, so thank you, Dawn, for decorating my Chief. Oh, uh, so decorating my Chief. <laughs> my door. My door. <laughs> For all the people who decorated their trunks, we had the Wizard of Oz, Munchkin Land to Emerald City, between two cars. We had witches, we had Pokemon, we had bones. My chiropractor was part of it. Um, uh, really, it was just, it was an amazing day. Greg Papiu, if it wasn't for Greg, we would have never had the fire truck. And I can't thank Greg enough for that. Um, and the fire truck said to me, a Tyler, who was the, the captain, he said, I'm going to come back next year, but next year I'm going to be part of the trunk or treat and give out candy. <laughs> How great is that? Great. Maybe we could get other, other uh, like a policeman. And, you know. Anyway, thank you all for your donations, whether it was money or candy you gave to me. If it wasn't for you, there was five cars that needed candy and we have extra candy left over and that's going to go to Jill Socha and Social Ministry for um, the CPC dinner. We understand that they like candy. So that extra candy is going to go to Social Ministry. Uh, Bill Screen, I call him, I'm like, Bill, I need three, <laughs> this, I need that. And he just manages to do it. And thank you, Bill, always. Um, and last but not least, my husband, John. <laughs> and he's going to be like, don't thank me. But he's the one making the signs. He's the one blowing up the blow ups around church. And he was the one with the idea for the fire truck. John's the one that says, why don't you get a fire truck? I was the one that did it, but he, it was his idea. And um, for listening to all my crazy ideas and helping me through these things and being by my side, be a huge part. So thank you, John. And um, after Trunk and Treat was over, I don't know if you guys noticed, there's a new sign out front for our next event for our outdoor movie this Friday night. And Roger Foss, thanks to Roger Foss for um, a projector and an outdoor screen, we are going to be showing the movie Sting. And this movie is so uplifting and fun. I know a lot of people haven't seen it, but it, it's really an adult humor, but very kid-friendly movie. So we're going to be showing the movie Sting Friday night outside, 6.30. Bring your chair, bring a blanket. We're going to have popcorn and hot chocolate and it should be a fun night. So I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, it was a great event. This was not just me. This, this is a lot of people involved. So thank you all. My neighbor did want to know what happens in the garage. <laughs> he saw the sign and he said, What's that about? <laughs> Maybe you'd like to hear it. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few words. This is a hard act to follow. <laughs> but, um, Really and truly, uh, from the bottom of my heart, all the gals who worked so hard uh, for the last three weeks, we worked two days a week, and then the last week was an a, a intense pricing event, and uh, we had so many people come, and um, they they do appreciate our garage sale. They, they say it's the best garage sale mm -hmm. in the area. And we're so proud of it. And um, I think Ann might have a total for us. I don't know. Um, okay. But we're still in the process of selling. Please join us downstairs for coffee hour and everything is still for sale. It helps us to clear out more of our merchandise today. Because starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we're going to be cleaning up. So anyone who can come tomorrow morning to help clean up, we really appreciate your help. So right now, our preliminary total is $4,000. So again, we're still selling. We don't have a final total. We'll have that after today. So thanks for all your support. Yes, thank you, everyone, and it's much appreciated. Well,
well, friends in Christ, it, it is a blessing to be here and see everyone in their Reformation red as we celebrate Reformation Sunday. And I always get a, a question asked, Pastor, where's your red? And I say, oh, I'm wearing red. And they and, and both say, oh, that, that don't count. That doesn't count. So I just I just want to let you know that I do have some red on Bam. So I do have some red on. If, if anybody questions, where's your red? <laughs> so, friends in Christ, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning as we're best with the prelude from Peter. <laughs>
people of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mm-hmm. 
Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by a deed prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed, and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed all the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded by what law? By what of works? No, but by the law of faith, where we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. <laughs> said to him, today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. Christ. All right, can you make it clear? It's a hard reading for you to relate to. We <laughs> know, right? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> You know it. You know it. <laughs> Zacchaeus was a real man, a real man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Bible school one. I, I didn't hear it yet. <laughs> if you need it in this sermon, just. I don't, I, okay. <laughs> Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Peter must have been Peter must have been thinking about the introduction to my sermon because I I I, I didn't have it in, 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 in my notes. Um, and, uh, just this past week, I was walking back from my favorite store on Broad Street, Jack's Jack's. Jack's music store that has you. For those of you, you, you know I love CDs. I hope I bought, I bought a ton of them in the garage sale this past week. But 
I was, I was walking back from, from, from Jack's music store and I just happened to, to, to see four young uh, boys who were walking, uh, they were walking home from school and uh, they, 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 they stopped to ask me, how, he, he says, how tall are you now? <laughs> Usually, what, when, I, when I am asked a question, what, what, the, the first question is, do you play basketball? <laughs> the, 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 the second question is, is usually it has something to do with, do you have a, a hard time finding clothes or, 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 or finding a car to drive? And it, but most of the time, the question that I, I'm asked is, is how tall? are you? And I, and usually when I'm with a, a group of folk, I usually don't just blurt out how tall I am. I, 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 I work, I, I, I give them an opportunity to work for it. So I, I did it with the, the young people uh, this past week. I said, how, how tall do you think I am? And, and one, one of the young people said, well, he, you're 6'5". And then I said, no, no, no. And another one said, you're, you're, you're 6'2". And I looked at him, I'm like, no, I'm not 6'2". And then another one said, six, eight. And I said, oh, you're close. And then the young lad behind me said, you're six, ten. And I said, you're right, I'm six, ten. And from there, we just sort of got into a conversation about how tall I am, do I play basketball? How, can, can, you, can, can you touch the rim? Can you dunk? <laughs> <laughs> like, for like 15 to 20 minutes, I'm mean, sitting and just answering these questions that these young people we're, tall, we're sort of throwing out at me about being tall. <laughs> you know, the obvious advantages to, and disadvantages to being tall, one of the disadvantages are is the, the, it's sometimes hard to find, find clothing you know, and, 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 or, or find a, a nice, uh, comfortable seat to sit in, especially for those of you who are Broadway show uh, attendees, you know how small those Broadway uh, seats can be in some of the Broadway houses. Uh, but um, one of the advantages of being tall is you always have sort of the best seat in a crowd. You always, you, you can sort of look over everyone and see whether it's a stage or some sort of performance that's going on. And it just so happens, as we are looking at our gospel uh, this morning, we are we encounter uh, a man who is somewhat short in stature. And we see this story about what happened to him when he uh, has, has an encounter with Jesus. In, 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 in this 19th chapter of, of Luke's gospel, this story appears uh, right before Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So just sort of to give you a little bit of a background of what's going on in our story this morning, th throughout the whole summer, we've been in, we've been, Primarily looking at the, the gospel of St. Luke, and we, we, we heard and seen stories about Jesus' preaching, teaching, and healing, and we, we noticed how his, his, his popularity has been, has been growing by leaps and bounds throughout the stories that we've, been, we've read throughout the summer. And now Jesus is coming, he's, he's coming toward the end of his, his journey. Uh, he's just about ready to enter the city of, of Jerusalem when he's passing through a city called Jericho. And as he's going through, I'm sure there are people that have here heard about Jesus, heard about his preaching and his teaching and his, and his healing. So they, they, they want to sort of, there are they're some who want to find out who this radical rabbi is who they've been hearing so much about. And there are some people who, who want to sort of welcome Jesus as he's passing through the city of Jericho. And our story says that as Jesus was going through Jericho, he, he, encountered a, a, he encountered a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Now, if, if you remember last week, in, in our story last week, with the, with the Pharisee and, and, and the tax collector in the temple praying, we, we, we learned that, that, that tax collectors weren't looked upon favorably in Jesus' mind. They were looked upon as being collaborators with the, with the Roman government, looked upon as being traitors 
to their own people. So tax collectors, again, don't have a, they don't have a good reputation in Jesus' time. And in our story this morning, uh, Jesus encounters this man named Zacchaeus. He's a tax collector. He's, 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 he's rich. But he's also a little bit short in stature. And Zacchaeus, for whatever reason, we don't know. Uh, Zacchaeus, he, he hears that Jesus is coming through town. And he, he wants to catch a glimpse of Jesus, but he's too short. So he, he, he sort of runs be, before the crowd and he wants to get the best seat in the house. So he climbs up a sycamore tree. And I, I don't we, we don't know, but as, as Jesus is probably passing through you know, Jericho with this large throng of people clamoring to, to, to catch up a glimpse of him or, or, or see him or be touched by him or healed by him, Jesus, he, he, he spots Zacchaeus. He spots Zacchaeus way up in, 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 in a tree. And, and, he, and he simply says to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, Come down out of that tree because I want to stay in your house today. Now, Zacchaeus is probably saying, Jesus, no my name. He knows who he knows who I am. And he he, he scurries down, he scurries down at the, the, the tree. And, and as as he's standing there, as he's standing there, the people who are watching. Begin to grow and karate. Now we've we've seen throughout the, the, the summertime in stories when whenever people sort of grumble, gripe, and complain about Jesus, it's usually because Jesus is doing something that they're not in, in, in favor of. Usually in our in our stories, it's in Jesus, but um taking care or or or, 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 or caring for. Um, orphans or, or, or widows or the downtrodden or the oppressed. And, and we that's what we see in, in our in our gospel story today. The people begin to grumble and gripe and complain. And and, and they, they 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 say to one another, who is this Jesus who who is who welcomes sinners and not only welcomes them he eats with them he eats with them well in the story that is the people are waiting and watching to see what jesus does and some are griping and complaining about what jesus is doing and Zacchaeus is coming down from the tree, and he probably hears the people complaining and griping and grumbling about him. He just stands there. He stands there and he says to Jesus, Lord, Lord, I'm going to give away half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have ripped off anyone, I'm going to pay back four times as much. And then Jesus looked at Zacchaeus. He looked at Zacchaeus and he said it loud enough so the onlookers can also hear. He said to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to your house. For the Son of Man has come, come to seek and save that which was lost. We don't know. We don't know a lot about Zacchaeus and we don't know. Uh, about Zacchaeus's past, but we do know that something happened to Zacchaeus with his encounter with Jesus this day. This 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 tax collector, this rich man, this person that the people in the community write and roll and complained about was transformed. He was transformed and and and, and he was changed. He was changed. I, I, I remember uh, this, this, this past week with our confirmation group, we were we were learning about Martin Luther and, and learning about that word reformation. And I, I sort of tried to break it down for the young people. And I just 
said to them, if someone asks you about reformation or what reformation means, there's one word that you can say. That word reformation means change. It means change. And that's, that's sort of like, you know, we have this beautiful reformation, uh, Holy Spirit read, and we we, we, we sang Martin Luther's wonderful hymn that you wrote, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And, and, and in, our, in, our, in our psalm this morning, uh, we, we have uh, Pauline read to us Psalm 46, which is somewhat uh, uh, where Martin Luther bases his words of a mighty fortress is our God, that, that hymn from. And what Martin Luther, what we do today, we celebrate what Martin Luther did back you know, on October 31st, 1517. When he boldly went to the largest uh, church in, in Wittenberg and nailed his 95 thesis on the, on, the, on the church, starting what we call the Reformation, starting what would, would change the life of the church. In today's gospel, friends, we hear the story of this tax collector named Zacchaeus. We learn about how his life. His life was transformed and his life was changed through meeting Jesus. When Christ encounters us, friends, we too are changed. We too are transformed. We're transformed by water and word. We transform by bread and wine. We're transformed by the very presence of Jesus Christ with us. Changing, transforming, and remolding and reforming us to be the people that Jesus wants us to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Our hymn is number 654, The Church is One Foundation, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5. Please stand. <laughs>
words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was with the sea by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the house of Pilate, was crucified by our Lord's death, he descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. And he will have a chance to be together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the right to rest in the body, and the life of the last thing. Amen. Let us pray. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on our hearts of your people, that we may remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, be brave. God, our liberator, we pray for your liberty. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment, that we may faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O God. God, our refuge and strength. We pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort to those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O God. God, our very present help in trouble. We pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Come all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis. Hear us, O God. O God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word. And give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O God. God, our stronghold, we give thanks to those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God. We pray, O God that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all in need. We especially pray for Grace, Phyllis, Gail, Linda, Fran, Loris, Larry, Ginny, Joe, Elaine, Nancy, Debbie, Megan, Andrea, Tom, Ryan, Leanne, Carmel, Joan, Brittany, Magda, Priscilla, Ray, Maureen, and Fred. We pray for those who died in the crowd crush in Korea. We also pray for Al, Stephen, Callie, and Oakley. For Liz, James, and Baby. Healing for Jerry, Zach, and Bob. The people of Ukraine, Russia, and neighboring countries affected by the war. Those whose lives are affected by gun violence. Immigrants searching for safety and sanctuary. Peace, protection, and harmony in our world. For those who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. Hear us, O oh God. You know, you are seeing dead and released. Good and gracious God, with grateful hearts we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus the Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And now may we share a moment of Christ's peace with one another.
This bread is my body, which will soon be broken for you. And whenever you eat of it, remember me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took a cup, and again, after giving thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, and he said to them, take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin, and whenever you drink of it, remember me. Amen. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, let us pray together our prayer that our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Lord's prayer. Our, our Father, Father Lord, 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 I <laughs> Our communion hymns are number 478, 471, and the last one, if we get to it, 510, is Leipster Yezu, a tune that was set by Bach many times, and it, it came after Martin Luther's time, but the text is from his, and it's one of the great theological parts of Lutheranism, the basis of the importance of the word. So um, if we get to it, 510 is our final communion. <laughs>
Downstairs, uh, a framed picture. Uh, please feel free to bring that uh, picture, and we'll make sure that we uh, display the picture of, of, of for your loved one uh, on the yeah, on table downstairs. And then we'll also have votive candles that will be lit prior to our service in memory of loved ones. Also, so thank you, thank you. Our hit is five fourteen. A word of God in carpet. <laughs>
inside you. 